Hey, good morning. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> uh, just real quick here. Uh, earlier this week, I posted a link to an article that um, was from CNN, but it came originally from The Lancet, which is a medical journal. And the um, summary, basically, the message or high point of the article was that from the mid 1970s till now, there has been a tenfold increase in the amount of obese children and teenagers. Now, this is a, a huge problem. Uh, I don't know that there is any kind of way you can state it in terms without doing justice to how big of a problem this is. So it's a big problem for, for many reasons. One is uh, our uh, approach to prevention is pretty poor. We don't do a good job of, uh, of tailoring. When I say we, I say we as a society. Uh, we don't do a good job of tailoring a message for people that need help. All we do is basically tell them to eat less food and do more exercise. And um, that's really a crap recommendation. Particularly for people that are on this obesity list or have diabetes or high blood pressure or any of these other things. It doesn't really tell them how to do anything other than count their calories. And, and so what the ultimate end result is that people focus on how much they eat versus what they eat. And um, we put quantity uh, at a higher value than we do quality. And it doesn't really matter what people tell you. A thousand calories from Twinkies and a soda are not the same as a thousand calories from chicken breast and broccoli. Now, if you put them in a bomb calorimeter and measure how much heat they produce so that you can exactly tell how many calories they have, sure, those numbers are the same. But once we start eating those foods, they act differently. So this idea, this focus on calories allows us to You know, not worry so much about the quality of the food we eat and worry more about the quantity of the food we eat. Well, if we're eating a quality, a lack of, a very low quality diet to begin with, it doesn't matter. We're still going to be unhealthy. We're still going to be sick and nothing's going to change. The other problem with this statistic is in, in America, when people are diagnosed with a chronic condition, whether it be diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or, or whatever the case may be, but I'm focusing on those three for here, uh, for this, our healthcare system does a terrible job of treating them. It does a wonderful job of managing the condition, but it doesn't treat anything. So we have a problem. People become diabetic or hypertensive or be uh, diagnosed with high cholesterol, they start taking medicine and because they're not getting any kind of information to fix the problem, they stay that way for the rest of their life. And so when their meds run out, they have to renew and they have to renew and then they have to do it again and again and again and they have to do it until the end because their condition doesn't get better. And so that's what I mean when I say we're only managing the condition. And, and by managing the condition, what we're doing is taking medicine to make sure a number, whether it's cholesterol comes down or blood pressure or blood sugar, we take medicine to control how high or low, or we just get those numbers within ranges. And so that's what I mean by managing the condition. Since people don't get better, we don't really as a healthcare system, we don't have any way of targeting why those numbers are going up. So that's why they don't get better. And so once you're in the category of people that have been diagnosed with one of these conditions, 
you're taking medication, it's hard for you to get out following kind of the standard protocol of advice. So what's the problem here? Well, this population of people that are diagnosed and taking medications, it never gets smaller. And then you have this group of kids that are, some of them are under 10 and some of them are teenagers, but they're already obese. And this is the precursor to all of this stuff. And so in 10 to 15 years, they're going to start being diagnosed with high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and, and some of these other things, high cholesterol. And, and they're going to be put on medications when they're in their mid to late 20s. And now we make this population of people over here that are diagnosed even bigger, and we increase the age range. So we've got younger people in here. And they never, that population of people never gets smaller. So the ultimate problem here is that if you think our healthcare system is jacked up now, and believe me, it is, if, if you did not know, type 2 diabetes is the most expensive condition to have and treat because we can have it for a long period of time. Medications are expensive. Comorbidities are plentiful. And the treatment for those is, or the management for those is, is also very expensive. So what does that mean? We have a bunch of people that are already costing us a lot of money. And then we've got a bunch of people that are, we're just going to add to that population that are going to start costing us a lot of money too. So that's where the real problem is. In 10, 15, 20 years, this is going to be a major issue for our healthcare system unless we do something significant about it. And I have some ideas on that, and I've already been, you know, over seven minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. Maybe I'll come back tomorrow with another live video on my thoughts on how to fix this problem. All right, so thanks for bearing with me. I'm a little bit frustrated at some of these uh, statistics that continue to come out and why they're a problem. Anyway, you guys have a great day. Thanks for uh, watching. Thanks for being on our page. And let me know or let us know with your comments below how we can help you. All right? You guys have a great day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.